I became involved in street-based prostitution back in 1991. I was 15 at the time and then followed seven years of prostitution in various areas of the sex trade. At um, 22, I managed to extricate myself from that life. In my nine years in the streets, in, in prostitution, being prostitution, or bought, sold and exploited by men, I, I was, I, 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 I've never come across one woman who said that they recognize this, uh, uh, the, this, this activity as work. All of us recognized it as a means of survival when there were few or no other options for us. Prostitution is neither sex nor work. It's not sex because there's no mutuality involved. So that's not sex, that's sexual abuse. And it's not work because we should never dignify exploitation with the term of work. So no, I would never use that terminology and I'd strongly advise nobody else to use it either. I think we need to understand the of the language we use. If we call sex work work, then it is work like any other and people can be compelled to do it. I was in prostitution um, for nine years and initially I had a time frame of getting into prostitution because we are in debt and we're on the verge of losing the only thing that we had as a home and the shack we lived in. My time frame was a month at tops. I was going to get the money, pay the debt for my mother and then maybe get a little more money to start up some, something like a little or small business or informal business. But nine years later I found myself still, still trapped within the system of prostitution. And the impact is always the same. It's always psychological, emotional, spiritual devastation, quite frankly. I, I'm worried about the fact that the words sex work is also creeping into the uh, vocabulary of the United Nations. And that worries me because I think it represents also a, an attitude and I, I feel worried about that. And I believe that uh, we should look carefully at the, as you said, also the motives are to protect women who are very vulnerable and exposed. So how do we do that in the, in the best possible way? Prostitution absolutely should not be fully decriminalised and there is a, a great deal of confusion around this in the world. People think that by decriminalising prostitution, what's meant is decriminalising the prostituted persons involved. But that's only one element of the full decriminalisation model. The other elements involve decriminalising pimps, decriminalising brothel keepers, decriminalising all third party profiteers and of course decriminalising the men who abuse and exploit women within that system. So absolutely no, I don't believe that this uh, entire ugly, brutal system should be decriminalised, not at all. The only parties who ought to be decriminalised are the exploited persons caught up within it. If it is decriminalized, we stand the danger of prostitution being offered to those who are underprivileged and poor black women and girls, in my context of South Africa, uh, as a solution to their poverty. I'm not long back from New Zealand where prostitution is fully decriminalized, by which that means uh, pimping is fully decriminalised, um, sex buying, brothel keeping, all of those things are fully decriminalised in New Zealand. And this is how bad it's got. The women tell me, the, the street reach women who, who do the outreach work, they tell me that they used to work with uh, six to eight women a night. Since decriminalisation 14 years ago, now it's in the region of 50. So it has exploded. I think that the majority of funding agencies that fund the call for the full decriminalisation of prostitution genuinely don't understand the call that they are answering because the call they are answering involves decriminalising exploitative parties. 
sexually exploitative parties, financially exploitative parties. It is going to perpetuate patriarchy. It is going to create a situation where men feel entitled to women's bodies to access them, to commodify and objectify for their own sexual gratification. If I had a message for them, it would be to look more deeply into what it is that you are funding and to ask direct questions. Is this money, for example, going to go towards decriminalising pimps and brothel keepers? Is this where you want your funding to go? Is this really the influence you want your organisation to have in the world? I feel that prostitution should not be fully decriminalised, but uh, should be abolished altogether to realise women's equality.